Um, good evening. The um, January uh, uh, 2023 Board of uh, Trustees meeting is hereby convened um, and called to order. Um, I would first ask, uh, well, first to simply extend uh, uh, greetings for a happy new year to everybody. Hope everyone survived the holiday season in relatively good order. And um, the uh, uh, new year begins. Uh, let us start with the approval of the minutes for the special meeting on December 13, the regular meeting on, on December 13, and the special meeting on January 6th. Is there a motion? I'll move it. A second. Second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Thank you. Uh, I will begin with the mayor's report. Um, and uh, just to comment as the, under the Zoom system that we're involved in, um, if you recall when we were meeting on a regular basis on Zoom, uh, our format on screen was basically a checkerboard uh, and all of the participants were, uh, or most participants were uh, both visually and uh, audibly uh, present and there was an identification name beneath each. The format has changed some somewhat uh, with the um, uh, integration of the live and the uh, uh, distant participation. And uh, what we're working on is trying to get uh, uh, further back to the uh, process we had where uh, if you choose to, you're able to see the, the whole room, if you will. Um, uh, if there are uh, two or three screens worth of checkerboards of people participating, uh, it, it, and there's some wisdom from this about this from Zoom, that it enriches the meeting if it, we convey more of a sense of how many people are participating and that sort of thing. So I just want you to know we're working on that. Uh, every bit of this is over my head, but we've got very good people uh, trying to do that. To just make it, if we're going to continue into the future with a combination meeting, to make it as the, the richest format we can in terms of uh, participation. Um, the um, uh, matter is in the news I would talk about. Uh, let me start with, um, we uh, celebrated uh, with Aiden and with my colleagues um, in the fall, the success of the uh, parking, uh, the park mobile uh, program that we had and the income that it produced. And we uh, very excitedly and ambitiously set out to do some uh, sidewalk work. Um, and um, we did quite a bit. We did uh, $94,000 worth of sidewalk work um, just uh, recently. And that is essentially more than three years worth of what we were able to do in our conventional budget. So the um, program uh, turned out to be more ambitious than we've been able to do in many, many years. And for that, we're very, very grateful. I want to apologize to the village that the timing got awkward uh, because of the rush to get it done uh, against the weather, against the clock and so forth. And so we found as we got into the lower streets, uh, uh, a couple of occasions, uh, an afternoon, better part of a day, where there was some uh, interference or at least a disruption of uh, some of the shopping environment. Um, so uh, uh, yes, I'm sorry, sorry it happened that way. Um, not, it's an explanation, not an excuse that the uh, uh, contractor was available, the clock was running, we had a couple of days of uh, loss from weather. And so my apology to the village, to the merchants, particularly on Main Street, uh, I visited with them uh, the last few days, uh, but let us not lose sight of the fact that uh, we were able to accomplish record numbers of uh, repairs um, and we'll have details on that um, uh, very, so very soon. Um, we had uh, scheduled um, uh, three introductions for tonight, but upon consideration, we've had a number of uh, late appearing um, uh, commentary, uh, thoughtful commentary uh, from a lot of uh, interested and in, uh, involved people on uh, our approach to the rental registry. 
I recall that we've undertaken to create a rental registry for all the good reasons one would have it, uh, and especially driven by considerations of safety, public safety, uh, particularly the experience of the early fall. So uh, we are going to, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's in the agenda, but we're going to put it over till the February meeting while we further digest and work with the additional inputs that we have had. Uh, we treat this as a very important uh, legislative writing um, uh, project for us, and we want to get it right. So uh, that will be, um, we'll uh, not have that on the, uh, uh, on the agenda tonight. We do have two other introductions, which we'll talk about, one uh, dealing with pre-submission requirements, and another, um, uh, and uh, Aiden, I would ask you to leave that when we get to it, is the paid parking the revisions sure. you want to make yep. uh, to the program. Um, we'd also been asked by Peconic Jitney uh, for them to come in and make a, make a discussion like a presentation of where things have gotten. A lot of that has to do with what's going on in Greenport. Um, they said they uh, were not ready, so we will not have a report on the uh, Peconic Jitney tonight. Um, and they asked if they might come in in February. Um, and uh, with that, um, I would conclude the mayor's report and in order for the first time in many months, I would now call on the treasurer to <laughs> in sequence as uh, described in the agenda, um, Tim Bullock. Good evening, board. Uh, as of November, 2022, uh, the revenues are at 10.6 million. Uh, the building department is up departmentally, uh, 175,000 over the prior, uh, prior year. Uh, we also received donations in November for the fire boat, uh, 80,000. We also have an uh, insurance claim to equip towards the fire, new purchase of the new fire boat of 24,000. Uh, Justice Court is down from the prior year of 186,000. Um, again, this is prior from the backlog of tickets in the prior years um, that happened. Uh, but for them, they're pretty much to hit the revenues as expected that we budgeted for um, for the current year. Expenditures, uh, we're at 45% of our budget at 8.2 million compared to the prior years that we were at 7.2 million at this time. Uh, the variance really due to our long work down payment on the van, offset by the time of the health insurance billings. Uh, in November, uh, we had some street paving for Clinton, Elizabeth, and Jefferson of 72,000. And we also had additional costs with the sewer uh, shed at uh, 35,000. And then the cost to uh, tow that fire boat out of the water cost us eight thousand. Um, and then also we're going to go into the budget season for the coming year soon. Um, so we meet with the department heads to find out their expectations and requests coming up. And that's my report. Thank you, Tim. Any questions for the treasurer? Nope. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Um, We'll go to now to committee reports and begin with Deputy Mayor Tom Gardella on police, fire, and ambulance. Uh, with your permission, Mayor, I'd like to go out of order and recognize somebody in the audience. Sure, sure. That's okay. I'd like to call Councillor Edward Burke Jr. up. He has a presentation to make to the village. Thank you so much. It's not a subpoena, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not as a feeder, Mayor, and a uh, pleasure to appear before you and your trustees and Ms. Val. Usually I stand before this podium on, on Fridays uh, advocating for my clients and uh, standing before several boards with site plans and zoning plans. And tonight's uh, so, so different. Um, what a way to start off the new year just in this, um, in this way, Mayor. Um, I have a donation, as I heard Tim talk about uh, the fire boat. Um, this is a donation from a client, a friend, uh, and his wife uh, would like to make a sizable donation to that project. Uh, Jack and Cheryl Morris, um, who have um, recently come, our neighbors here in Santa Barbara on Rison Street, and, and uh, we'll flip the page from uh, previous uh, years of that to uh, the present time where they couldn't be happier. Um, and to that, you know, our, I mean, your honor, I'm calling you your honor. Uh, Mayor, I have a donation of $100,000 to that project wow. from them. I have this check here, which uh, usually checks are hard to read. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have one of the big ones? <laughs> 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 um, it is my pleasure to speak on their behalf and pretend to take that and 
Uh, I wanted to make that. Thank you. On Please That's express your gratitude. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You are always welcome here, sir. Yes. <laughs> I'll see you next, uh, next week. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very thank much. You, thank you, Jack. To, to Mr. and Mrs. Morris. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, so uh, on that subject, Mayor, the as you know, we had the $250,000 grant that we worked on for the kitchen and other improvements at the old firehouse repurposed because we had put that project out to bid three times and we didn't get any response. So we had that $250,000 repurposed towards the purchase of the boat with uh, Assemblyman Fred Thiel's help. And with Jack's donation of $100,000, I believe we're, where are we right now at the boat reserve? With that, it's 149000 So <laughs> that would match that two fifty. So right now, we have half a million dollars to purchase the boat. So we'll be going out. We're finalizing the specs with the Chiefs. We'll be going out to purchase the boat. That's excellent. So, Congratulations, Todd. That's really good. So, so that will lead, us, lead me to the... I'll start out with the police department's report for the month of December. 2022. Uh, the police, Stag Harbor police force was called out 675 times in the month of December. Uh, there was one unlawful disposing of, I guess it was a ticket or a summons. There was, I guess somebody ripped up there. <laughs> Never good that's idea. About. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was, yeah, no, not a good idea. Four suspended registrations. There was 10 motor vehicle accidents in the month of December. We had five arrests, uh, no DWIs, thank God, no BWIs, because obviously there's nobody on the, not too many people on the water. And we had 50 uniform traffic tickets were issued. Uh, for year to date, we had 120 arrests, 10 DWI arrests, and no BWI, which is boating while intoxicated. We didn't have any of those. And we had 687 uniform traffic tickets issued. And the chief for us had, has done a five-year comparison, which I'll share with the board. It's, it's in your uh, packets that, that shows the comparison of over the years. Where, so can you years. say again the number of call-outs for the month of December? It was 675. In the month of December, it's right. 20, over 20 a day. Yes. So, you know, part of, wow. again, the the... the I think the misconception in general with law enforcement, you know, they, there's so much interaction with the police and the public. And the fact that every once in a while there, there's a bad incident, I don't think people really take into consideration how, what that percentage is overall on how many times the police respond to calls. And our police force, we're very blessed that our officers, the chief, and everybody, we haven't had any complaints. I haven't gotten any personal complaints. So I would like to thank them for a very productive and successful year with the village. So thank you to our police force. Uh, that brings us to the fire department. Uh, in the month of December, 2022, the fire department volunteered for over 998 man hours. During the month, the officers and members of the department responded to 59 calls for service. These calls included three structure fires, two motor vehicle accidents, four mutual aids to Bridgehampton and North Sea. With the holiday season in full swing, the Sag Harbor Fire Department helped Santa get his public events within the fire district by delivering him to the windmill and taking him through North Haven. The members of the fire department also participated in first responders basketball game against the teachers at Pearson, which we won. The first responders won the game. Yeah. Everybody yeah. survived too. Congratulations. Did you, did you see the game? I did not. I didn't see it, but victory for us. That leads us to the, the ambulance corps, which in the month of December in 2022, we had 78 emergency calls. We had four work nights, two meetings, two training sessions, and one standby for a total number of man hours of 965 which is up from December of 2021. December of 2021, we were at 698 man hours. So that's quite a jump. Uh, for the year, 
we had total man hours were 12,993 for the volunteer ambulance corps. So uh, as you can see, there's been a significant increase in the number of emergency calls handled by our organization. Uh, we were able to handle the increase with the same number of volunteers we had last year. So uh, our president, Missy e. Hessler, would like to wish the board a happy and healthy coming new year. And that concludes my reports, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, next up, um, Trustee uh, Korsh for the sewer department, village grants, and related matters. Thank you, Mayor. And Ma parking. And parking. I'll, I'll run into parking right now. Or do you want me to wait and introduce that? No, go do it now. Okay. And we'll get to talk. Right. Um, well, in a very good way, sewer and grants overlap uh, tonight. I'll start off with the sewer report and then we will be able to move on to our grant situation. So the sewer report for the month of December, year of 2022, the total gallons received in the month was 1.815 million gallons. Total gallons of sludge removed, 21,000. Uh, DMO reports were forwarded on 117.23. Suffolk County DHS inspection date, the next inspection from Suffolk County be uh, well, it's actually was yesterday, it was 1-9, but I guess this report was prepared a few days beforehand. Um, the New York State DC inspection date is open as always. We have no complaints. A summary of operations, wastewater treatment plant running well under all permitted levels. And we're now just operating on two of the five uh, 50,000 gallon basins that we have. Uh, Benson Contracting, who are a... Um, a repair company we use, uh, they came out to install a new influent valve in basin number one. We had one alarm at the plant for a power loss that was checked out, reset, everything was okay. The flow increased from November, December, uh, the flow increase from November to December was approximately 128,000 gallons, showing that I guess business in the village, in the commercial district picked up in the month of December. Um, moving on to grant reports, we have some very good news this month. Um, apparently, um, the town of Southampton at their October meeting approved our grant application um, for Sewer Shed K, and that was in the amount of $2,340,536. That's a remarkable amount of money for this village to get. When we add that to the over a million dollars we got from East Hampton, another 600000 pending from East Hampton, um, that gives us our, our, the match we need for the six million plus dollars that are that is pending right now from the state of New York. That's an application we put in last July. Um, at the time, we weren't able to confirm that our local match had been assured, but we said it had been um, that it, it had been applied for. So we're still waiting to hear the results of that application. Normally, the, the state would return these results in in early December, first or second week and all the uh, New York State CPF applications will come out together. This year, uh, with new governor, it's slightly different. So results are coming out um, in different tranches, depending on the nature of the application. So uh, we're hoping in the next two or three days to hear about New York State. If we're not successful, we'll immediately have a conference with the state. We'll find out what our shortcomings were, and we'll make adjustments and we will reapply. And I, I have no doubt that we will ultimately be successful so we can press ahead with the sewering of these two areas of the village and be great benefit to our water quality. Also, more good news for Haven Speech. Last year, um, you may or may not remember, we submitted an application to New York State uh, for $66,171 to conduct a very in-depth study of the Haven's Beach watershed um, to see what we could do to um, help help the quality of the water that's coming out of the green there. Uh, we were unsuccessful last year. We sat in New York State. We revised our application in accordance with their uh, very constructive criticism. And I'm happy to announce that we found out this week that we were approved for $66,171. So we'll be able to move ahead with, um, with that study. And hopefully that will allow us to get a much better understanding of Haven's Beach and what we need to do there to improve it as, as time goes on. That's very exciting. This is something that's been three or four years in the making. Um, so, so far we have received, we're almost at a 5 million, as far as grants that we've received since we started these sewer projects, um, going back about four years ago, we've had just over a million dollars from uh, East Hampton CPF. Suffolk County gave us $250,000 this year. And I just gave, and then we also had uh, for engineering work earlier on in this project, 
we've had about five hundred thousand dollars in total from both towns for all the the engineering work we needed to do on areas K and L before we could even start to apply for grants. Um, so, and we also had one hundred forty four thousand eight hundred dollars from East Hampton and South Hampton CPFs to create the um, the master plan that all this is based upon. So we're really hoping as we move ahead, um, we have a sewer committee and, and Ed Hay has joined the sewer committee um, as has um, uh, John, Shaka. John Shaka from the planning board has joined and John Parker has been working with us for a long time. And we work with Jennifer Messiano as our grant writer and Mark Wagner, um, who is our consultant engineer. So we feel some great momentum moving into this year and that we can make some real differences and hopefully you know, within 12 months, we might have shovels in the ground somewhere. So that's all very exciting. I'd like to thank everybody that's involved. This is work that's been shared out among an awful lot of people, put a lot of time into it, and all the municipalities in the state of New York who are so generous in the, in the grants. It's a, it's a very worthy project, um, but and it's going to take another few years to come to fruition. But uh, we're, we're, we're well down the road. Um, and I believe that brings me on to parking. Um, so we're going to, pig parking has proved to be fairly successful and we've seen that the vast majority of, of the money is coming from our friends and visitors from out of town. So this year we would like to expand the season a little bit on the front end to bring it in May 1st instead of May, I think it was May 17th or something or we, we started last year. And instead of ending on October 10, we're going to run it right out to the end of Thanksgiving, the end of November. So we have a proposal, we're going to introduce um, um, a public hearing, I guess, notification of a public hearing, um, that we would begin paid parking from May 1st, and then we would, we would extend all the way through to November 30th. Um, one of the things we're going to look at at a paid parking this year, we, as you know, we paid for a lot of sidewalk repair. Um, we may also be able to use some of this paid parking money as a local grant to leverage state money. So for every dollar we can raise locally, we can turn that into $4. With the state if we have a local match so as we as the year progresses we can look at other big projects around the village that may need to be uh that, that may need to be undertaken and maybe some paid park money instead of using it to do projects you know out of cash flow that we can use it um, to leverage more state funds for big, for bigger projects but that's a discussion that we'll have as, as the year progresses and I believe you've heard enough from me right now. So thank you very much well, for your you bring, indulgence. When you bring money, you can talk as long as you want. <laughs> thank you, Aiden. Um, Mr. Plum, uh, planning. Yes, we're still uh, in the process of organizing a public hearing for motion time. <clears throat> and we're trying to get it on soon, I hope. Um, and in terms of it'll be either a, a in, in a regular trustee meeting or a special um, session to just get input uh, from village residents as to what they see as the goals and the obstacles, et cetera, and long-term big picture uh, outlook and planning for the village. So we are trying to uh, organize that. There's a lot of pieces. And that's it. Great, uh, thank you, Bob. And um, Trustee Hay. Um, thanks. This will be brief to the uh, MASH Park. I'll start with um, is going through the winter months are a little quieter. There a lot of cleanup going on in the park, but there's also uh, a lot of work done by the park board on planning some of the capital needs um, for the park going forward. Um, the hard court tennis, which might end up becoming a pickleball court, who knows, going forward. And then um, the houses that house um, the MASH Park employees as well are going through some upgrades. We're planning for the funding of those in addition to the next stage of the grandstand repairs, the lower levels of the grandstand. All works in progress over this winter, um, either in the planning stages or in the case of the grandstand, hopefully will be completed this winter as well. Um, and the park and the school continue to discuss and negotiate um, um, longer term capital improvements to the fields of the park. Um, um, some of that's contingent on what's going on between the CPF and the school for the Marsden properties, but we continue the dialogues going and keep the planning process going. So whenever decisions are made, we can move as efficiently as possible um, to begin the capital improvements. Um, that's pretty much it for the MASH Park. And for um, the Justice Court, um, we have no reports to give today. We're going through some personal changes at the Justice Court and we'll resume the, the reports next month. 
Uh, thank you, Ed. Um, I will now pick up the, uh, the departmentals that I do. I wanted to get out of the way so we could receive our visitor with money. <laughs> no. um, uh, talk first about the building department. Uh, we now have the figures coming through the end of December, and it looks like year to year that the revenues produced via the um, permitting process um, have come in at $875,460. That represents a $295,817 improvement over the year before. These are uh, very good numbers. And recall that uh, when uh, Chris Talbot arrived as our new building inspector, um, he brought us up to date on practices in and around the region in terms of fee structure. And we were operating with a very outdated uh, protocol and we've uh, gradually brought it up uh, to the, this kind of a result. It supports a, a major uh, improvement for us in code enforcement and, and uh, watchfulness and all the things you wanna do in a department like that. Uh, and so it's finishing the year in, in a very good place indeed. Um, the uh, code enforcement uh, uh, by the uh, and the activity by the fire marshal. Now that we have our full our own full time fire marshal uh, in Bruce Scavoni, a uh, very qualified guy, um, former fire chief, and he has elevated the, our activity and uh, the particularly the safety related part of our code enforcement um, uh, very effectively. Uh, he gets out there on a regular basis, uh, and he is part of the working group we have that's working on the rental registry, because the focus of our rental registry activity um, includes um, and indeed is focused on uh, public safety elements of uh, uh, the code. Code is meant to do many things, but uh, safety of the community, safety of people residing and so forth. So uh, his activity report is here as well. Um, acted on uh, 13 complaints in December, uh, all resolved um, and uh, uh, cited 16 violations, um, all of which have been addressed. Um, so uh, the building department uh, uh, ends uh, the year in a, in a very good uh, place. Um, the um, uh, harbors and docks, are similarly finishing the year in a very good uh, posture. Um, and um, to say the least, the activity along the waterfront remains quiet in terms of uh, any boating. Um, but the uh, uh, biggest activity you'll see are the ice eaters that have been installed at the transient dock and B dock to uh, keep the water uh, moving on the coldest days. Um, the uh, Finally, the two boats that were sitting lonely out there on the outer mooring field have been removed. Um, the um, activity focused on the coming season has been very high uh, and uh, a lot of people wanna visit here. Uh, we're not gonna be able to accommodate everybody, uh, but um, we are ready. Uh, the system that uh, Harbor Master has put in with the uh, a company that is called DACWA has uh, streamlined our activity. It's increased our yield from our rentals and uh, freed up personnel. And young personnel for us in the summer is a real challenge uh, with uh, housing and other <laughs> limitations being what they are. Um, the department uh, completed three Marine patrols uh, during the past month, um, including one that uh, the, uh, involved a windsurfer in distress, turned out to be okay. Um, it involved calling personnel, personnel in um, who were off duty and uh, that was uh, uh, handled uh, well. The numbers for the year, um, we um, in 2021 had a, a, net, uh, income, a net income, if you will, uh, of, um, uh, over the year before, um, and we are now uh, finishing the year with an additional $122,000. Um, so the, uh, the good news is that uh, this 
source, which is the second highest after property tax of revenue to the village uh, and is our principal economy associated with tourism and recreation and culture and history that bring people here is uh, finishing uh, uh, with a very good year. There's some real capital needs to be addressed. Uh, we uh, received the bids, uh, we completing a bid process for the transient dock. Transient dock being the low lying dock with the floats that's just to the west of Long Wharf. Um, took a terrible beating, particularly last winter. Not so, we're pretty good shape so far um, after that. But uh, uh, it's a real capital need. Uh, we've got some financing uh, that we're putting in place uh, and we are at work now on reviewing uh, the bidding that came in and hopefully by next month, we'll be able to uh, get that project uh, in motion. It would be terrific if we can get it fully in place for the start of this season. And uh, our thanks and gratitude to Bob and his team for uh, advancing this uh, as quickly as we have. Um, and also uh, in this last month, we're welcoming uh, the addition of a dock master. If you remember at last meeting, we brought Jack Reiner, uh, Riser on board. And uh, so uh, subject to filling out with uh, our young staff for the summer, uh, Harbor and docks are in good shape. Um, the uh, story over at Public Works, um, the um, monies that uh, have been derived from parking have allowed us to advance the uh, annual sidewalk repair and renewal program at a rate that uh, uh, in a typical year, we budget only $30,000 for sidewalk repair. $13 million budget, there's a lot of competition. So the onset, the advent of three times that amount for this fall's program, um, means that in the last several weeks, the Department of Public Works has completed over 6,300 square feet of new uh, replacement, uh, particularly in trip and fall areas that we've experienced. Um, so uh, instead of uh, $30,000, we were able to spend up to $94,000 because of the new monies. So that is a big lift. Um, you've all seen them. Uh, you uh, heard my apology about um, disruption, but uh, the net net here has been very positive, uh, particularly for the commercial district. Uh, is everyone will observe who's on the turnpike that uh, public service and electric gas for LIPA, Long Island Power Authority, is upgrading electric service along there. There are new conduit pipes being laid. Um, it's off to the side of the road, but it's a caution area and it's going to be with us for several months. Um, the utility has no option but to upgrade and strengthen the service because our population has grown, uh, our activity has grown, and so that'll be with us for quite a while. Um, Is that they, electrical work they're doing? That's electrical work, I'm sorry, yes. Yeah. It's the electric utility. Um, we had the counterpart to that this year uh, with new gas pipe. As long as we're growing and activity is rising, the utilities will have the need for these projects. Um, patching work continues. Um, <clears throat> the uh, street sweeping, the last of the leaves are gone. Um, the department four or five years ago under Dee's leadership has brought in a salt brine machine. Um, and it is a machine that uh, takes fresh water, um, mixes it with salt, to a level that uh, constitutes uh, a safe level of brine for controlling icing on our roads. Uh, doing it this way, uh, rather than uh, the salt that you see spread, uh, the hard salts, the granulated salts, um, gives us an efficiency of between three and six times the amount of uh, work we get out of the same amount of salt. So, mixing the salt before application with water um, gives us the kind of glaze that allows the plowing to lift uh, uh, ice and snow much more efficiently, less damage to the roads. We've been doing it for the last four or five years and um, it reduces the amount of salt we keep on hand and uh, which we apply. 
uh, that work is underway. Um, the um, post-holiday removal of trees, wreaths, and other uh, holiday paraphernalia was accomplished by Dodds and Eater. This is a local company. Um, some recognize the name from uh, one of the members of the family who runs the music festival. Uh, this is all work done pro bono, uh, up and down at no cost to the village, uh, very much in the uh, community spirit. And uh, that work was completed this week. Um, other work that's going on, some that involves the other part of the uh, monies from the additional monies from the parking fund. Remember when we allow, allow, allocated $90,000 for parking, we also added 20 for drainage and yep. 20 for road work. Um, thus far, that has allowed the installation of two new catch basins in, Red, in Redwood. Uh, all overdue work that's also a benefit of uh, the program. And um, the uh, other work you might notice is the Suffolk County uh, Water Authority is out and about with um, uh, necessary repairs and off-season work as well. So a lot of work going on in the village and uh, 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 in every report we've made so far, there's an element of public contribution um, and uh, pro bono work. Um, we are, uh, many have noticed, perhaps noticed that there's some sand piles in uh, John Steinbeck Park. And uh, we are very close to being, starting to do the sculpting work to complete the, uh, the shaping of, of the ground above the beach area. And uh, that will uh, also involve the placement of sitting stones of some dimension along that, along that stretch. And that is um, uh, hopefully all work that will be in place with renewed topping, renewed seating, and the beginning of the placement of clusters of um, starting with something called red oak trees. Uh, and uh, as with what just happened with this uh, Christmas and holiday work uh, pro bono, what you're seeing in the park in this phase is all pro bono. This is all donated. Uh, Ed Hollander continues to lead that effort. Uh, just like we saw uh, Dodds and Eater, or say a local company that was uh, a tree company that uh, does all good work around town, they uh, stepped in. And uh, I think all of these examples, uh, uh, sir? The name of the company is? Dodds and Eater. Jackson, is it Jackson Dodds? Yeah. Jackson Dodds. Dodds, 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 Dodds and Eater. Eater. Jackson, okay. Jackson Dodds, not Eater. Right. So historic reference. <laughs> All the same family. Anyway, um, or not. Um, that concludes my reports. That concludes the departmental reports. But as for a motion to approve um, all of the departmentals and mayor, mayor and treasurer's reports. Is there a motion? Second. Or second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed. The matters are agreed to. We now, um, uh, or the reports are accepted. The, uh, we now open a 15 minute public comment period on the subject matter of the reports just heard. Does anybody care to be heard on the reports? Uh, please come forward. I just have a question. Okay. 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 Start again at the mic, if you would. Uh, I just have a question about the planning meeting, whether you want to have a timing that will um, involve the people that are here in January and February, because it's complicated to have a planning board meeting with money everybody to be here. I intend to announce it in advance, if that's what you mean. Okay. Yes, well, I've been thinking you have a, including a time that um, the people who are not here in the winter. Will they be able to participate on Zoom? Okay. Um, that, maybe yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was just thinking, we can, whether the people like this in the village. No, that's a good point. Oh, yeah, thank you. 
<laughs> we could have the meeting in Florida. Mm. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you. Any other comment? All right, we move now to introductions. Uh, we have uh, before us, um, yes, um, planned. Um, we have before us the um, first introduction of local law amending village code chapter 300, zoning 314.5, a planning procedure to create a new pre-submission hearing requirement. Uh, I would ask um, uh, Council uh, Liz uh, to give us um, a brief on where this comes from and what the idea is. Sure. So this would be a local law to amend the um, site plan application procedure in the code, um, which already has a pre-submission conference and work session provision in it. But this would require to actually hold a public hearing as that pre-submission conference. Um, so it would open a matter um, for applications that are either larger applications or have greater importance to the village. And they're listed in, in, the, in the proposed local law, the types of applications that would be subject to this hearing, but it would allow for those applications to be heard by the public or get input from the public immediately in the process. Um, and they could weigh in on the SECRA um, and any other concerns that the public might have. So they would be able to talk to the boards at the very first instance a larger application is submitted. Uh, would it be uh, safe to describe it as formalizing a practice that's occasionally been used of, of folks bringing uh, forward a proposal on a discussion basis before they're ready to bring it forward formally. Right. Well, I mean, a discussion, you know, the applicants will come in on a discussion. This would allow for um, the applicants and the board to hear from the public as well. At that, in that same that, setting. At that same setting, right. at the so first is, initial setting. Is this, is this, are these meetings going to take place at a regular board meeting? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's the proposal. I would hear a motion to introduce that, which would set in motion a public hearing process on this legislation. Um, let me get it introduced first, Anthony. Uh, is there a motion to introduce? I'm of it. And is there a second? second. Bob, uh, the matter is an introduction. All those approval approve, indicate by saying aye. Anthony, did you want to be heard? Yes. Come on up. So this is just uh, setting a public sure. hearing for the 14th. So come make sure, you know, if you make comments tonight, that's fine, but come back on the 14th. And for sure public record. input on this hearing. There's Anthony both. Urban Dwarf, There's one in the beginning and one at the end. Um, I, I guess I just want to um, say this for the first time, and I just want to clarify something here. Um, you know, just some of the things that uh, the projects that would be sub, uh, subject to this uh, pre initial requirement. And I hope I'm just misunderstanding the intent here. Um, for example, it says uh, the construction or placement of any new non residential building and structure, including an accessory building or, or structure. I mean, does that mean like a one car garage in an R20 district that's conforming to zoning? That's non residential building or structure. Okay, so. Why you, so if it's something in R20, it's conforming, it's residential. Yeah, this oh, okay. I, I, think, I think that's what I'm basically yeah. getting at here. This is just strictly for non residential right. projects. So, in other words, you wanted to build a garage on your behind your restaurant or something that would be subject to a garage right. behind a house. Okay, right. okay, all right. That, that's that makes sense. I think that's that's just my only concern. Thank you. So the motion has been introduced uh, to uh, set this in motion for public hearing. Uh, I would invite all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. The public hearing process has begun. Uh, next up is a local law extending the season for paid parking regulations as presented by um, Trustee Koresh. Would you like to introduce and explain? I will indeed. Um, after the success of the last two years of paid parking and the differences made to maintaining the village streets and other projects uh, that are transportation related, uh, we feel that it would be appropriate to extend the season. We don't think that would be a great hardship um, village residents, considering that uh, most of the monies, or not almost all of the monies that have been collected are from people from out of town, 
and our holiday season and our vacation season seems to be extending every year. So the proposal is for a short extension on the front end. So we would begin the paid parking season on May 1st at 12 a.m. And we conclude the paid parking season on November 30th at 11.59 p.m. Um, so that would extend, I think, by about six, six weeks. Um, I don't think it will be too onerous. I think it will be great for the village. I think the upside potential is wonderful. And this will set the public hearing for February 14th? Yes. Okay. So I'll make the motion. You make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Um, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Um, the public hearing is open. Is there anyone care to be heard on this? It's not open. It has to be noticed and it'll be open on February 14th. Come back in a month. Yep. Come back okay. in a month. Um, and just to clarify, this is just the same location. We're not adding any other locations. It's just Long Wharf. Right. Um, the third introduction, a local law amending village code to create the rental registry program as the one I described as we are um, uh, removing it from the agenda for now uh, as we continue work. Um, and um, I would move next to, um, uh, we have no discussion items um, or continued public hearings. We go to action items. Uh, the first is the, um, the 2022 bank reconciliations and collateral reports for November. Is there a motion? I'll move it. Second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay. Second and <laughs> approved, right? Okay. Um, number uh, two, uh, motion is agreed to. Um, Alan Siegel requests authorization for commercial slip mooring usage of mooring number G3 and dinghy dock number 46. Is there a motion? Hello. Bob, is there a second? Second. Ed? Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion is agreed to. Number three, Richard Scavoni, Secretary of the Fire Department, requests to accept the resignations of Patrick Lusick and Darius Dorf Lowry in good standing and also requests to move them from the insurance rolls. Um, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Um, uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Matter is agreed to. Helen DeGuardi, president of the Sag Harbor Chamber, requests permission to have the 12th annual Harbor Frost on Saturday, February 4th, 2023, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. on Main Street, Long Wharf, Windmill Beach, and Steinbeck Park. Activities include ice sculpting, live music at restaurants, outdoor games, the polar plunge, and fireworks. Uh, and they request permission to place a sign on the grassy area of Long Wharf. Uh, is there a motion? I just have a, <clears throat> do we know if they have the, if the firework permit has been submitted yet? It has still? not, and we followed up with Ellen today. We left her a message. Yeah, there were, there was some, um, yeah, it's in progress. All right. Um, the, um, any other questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Can I have a motion? Oh, is there a motion? <laughs> Ed, you can make that motion. I'd love to make that motion. I thought you did. Thank you, Bob. Bob second. Thank you. Um, I should mention to you all that uh, in talking to the chamber today, I volunteered that uh, Trustee Hay was going to lead Harbor Frost Polar Plunge this year, yeah. just so you know. From the Kim to California, yes, which is where I'll be. <laughs> In which case, I think the deputy mayor is going to have to step up. Got to go, Tom. Yeah, we're Whatever doing it, it takes. We're doing it in age order. And we'll yeah, have the fire rescue boat there to. Oh no, it won't be ready yet. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to be rescued. <laughs> Just let you go. <laughs> let it go. Don't take long. All right. Um, having bollocked up the sequence. Um, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Um, Anthony Hagen, uh, Anton Hagen requests authorization for commercial slip mooring usage of slip 23 at Marine Park. Um, I'll move it. I'll second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 aye it is agreed to. And number six, to accept the resignation of Mark Weiss, part-time police officer, um, 
Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Just Opposed? so you know, this, this young officer got a job, I believe in Riverhead full time, right? So that's why he's leaving mm -hmm. part time. Uh, number seven, Melissa Hessel, Missy Hessel, president of the volunteer ambulance, request authorization to accept the resignations of the following staff and remove them from the insurance rolls. Oliver Loeza, an EMT driver, uh, EMT and driver, and Melissa Calhorn, paramedic. I'll make the motion. And Is there a second? Sad to see Melissa going because she was my one of my instructors, but she lives further up west and it's hard for her to come out here. So I'll make the motion. Second. Second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Um, authorization for the clerk to authorize the attentive assessment role when received to create uh, an announced grievance day for February 21st from 1 to 5 p.m. here at Village Hall, a tax sale date of March 14th at 10 a.m., a budget schedule for the year, at, uh, for 2023 24, our fiscal year will be uh, beginning uh, in the late part of the spring, but the process opens now. Uh, Village Code 235 4 Snow and Ice on Sidewalks Notice. And number six, Code 265 43 Parking During Snowfall. Um, these are all uh, matters to come up and authorizing the clerk to announce uh, each of these. Is there a motion? I just have a question. Sure. The, the snow and, and ice on sidewalks, are we saying that if you own a shop on Main Street, are you responsible for that piece of sidewalk in front of you? It's my understanding that you yes. are. Yes. And if you, same with your house, the front of the pavement in front of your home, if it's paved. Is there any recourse if somebody's say elderly or they're having an issue with getting that done, is there anybody they can contact for help or? I think that? the practice has been in my experience that D and the department um, manage to find a way when somebody needs some extra help. Um, we're not, we don't like to exceed our authority, but if somebody's having a problem, either they somebody that they had didn't show up to snow uh, to shovel or something like that. We pitch in. Uh, your your village force does pitch in uh, as needed. Uh, so, is there a motion on on the six item number eight uh, authorization Jason, for the clerk? Sir. Yeah. Um, uh, is there a second? I'll second. Hayden, any further discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Matter is agreed. Uh, number nine, approval to set the date and time for the annual village election, June 20th, 2023, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. at fire headquarters, uh, declaring vacancies and to advertise all notices for village election. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Thank you. Number 10, resolution to accept the resignation of Leslie Murray. Uh, Leslie has been the clerk of the court uh, for, uh, I think, <coughs> since it came over, since the court was created? Yes, Leslie and I were hired actually the same day in 2010. Okay, well, we wish um, uh, Leslie all, all good wishes as she goes to uh, the next chapter. Um, um, is there a motion? I'll make it. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 The move, the motion is agreed to. Um, number 11 is to uh, uh, amend certain eligibility requirements and benefits under the health benefit plan. <coughs> is this the LOSEP item? No. No, this is this that amendment to the insurance um, that we, for a um, person who is eligible for being here for a long amount of time and worked in those two departments, just amending that. Okay. Um, I'll, is, make, I'll make the motion on this. Is there a second? Second. Uh, lay, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, the motion is agreed to. Um, and I'm happy to make this resolution number, um, uh, item number 12, to enter an amended license agreement with our good friends at Keyspan Gas 
East Corporation, also known as National Grid, uh, for the gas ball lot uh, for the year 2023. Under these special circumstances, it's a one-year extension, while the our current challenge to the awarding of the lease uh, to others um, is before the Public Service Commission, and this extension uh, keeps us in place for the year or the settlement before the PSC, um, whichever is sooner. And so I'm happy to move that. I'll uh, second This it. is one step at a time as for many years. I just even come up. What is the, the term of that lease? Um, I mean, how long does the other, yeah, we have it, I mean, the village has it for a year. We've had it for five years um, under a dollar a year arrangement. And uh, a couple of years ago, we competed for the long term uh, after that. And it was awarded to uh, uh, an outfit called 11 Bridge Street um, and uh, was awarded a 99 year lease. And uh, we objected then and now. And we are. Uh, uh, quarreling with the premises of that and how it came about and asking that the uh, uh, lease assignment be disapproved by the Public Service Commission and that in fact, uh, we as the municipal government uh, meet the highest test of public interest, which is the real standard that the PSC has to apply. So that's what, what this is about. The way it would be presented is that we will remain in possession and control as we have been now for six or seven years while this matter works its way at the Public Service Commission. And uh, uh, if we're successful, <coughs> the process would reopen. And uh, in any event, it covers us through the year 2023 if that process continues. It's just, yeah, so when the village doesn't have any control, it would have been key span. I mean, one would think that they would have put that out for a public hearing before they offered or issued a 99 year lease to anyone. Well, they did advertise and invited bids. Um, the story gets very complicated. I'm not gonna go through it now. It's a pending matter at the Public Service Commission, but we objected in all the key points and uh, we are uh, active at the Public Service Commission now. We think the matter of whether uh, in this uh, village that is strapped for tax uh, for parking, uh, that we would um, not engage to save 100 spaces and prevent it from going to a, a private for-profit LLC, uh, it strikes me as a no-brainer. Yes, indeed, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so I, I think I introduced or uh, yep, I, I moved second. the item. I second, second yeah. Tom. Uh, any further discussion? No. Um, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Number 13, authorization to hire Brandon O'Sullivan. I'm sorry, there's one question, comment, maybe sure. for Liz on this. The Go process ahead. is, what's the next step of the process for that with the PSA? Um, is there anything we have to do or the other side has to do procedurally? Procedurally? I'm, yeah. not, I'm not sure. We, we, did, we are a party, so we will be noticed to the next. My understanding was the last thing was we heard from um, National Grid. Actually, no, the Public Service Commission requested further information, I believe, from National Grid through discovery. That's, okay. what, that's what the last thing was that I saw. Great. And there's been more than one round of that. There, I, I would I say there. And the, then there were public comments put on the website as well. Yeah. And we did obtain party status. We're listed as a party to Village of Sag Harbor. That's as far as I've seen it proceed. Thank you. Right. Um, but the, it, it's, it strikes me at this point, it's still ongoing. They're, they're reaching out here and there. They're, they're still doing. They're the building diligence. the records. Yep. So then it would seem that they, anyone in the village or village residents they have, they have an interest in this. I'm sorry, Stephen, come back to the podium if you would. Should make it known to the Public Service Commission. There is a Does that have any impact on the suit now? You can comment publicly on the Public Service Commission website. Last I checked, there were 68 comments there from oh, various yeah. people. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's available for comment. Thank you. DPSNY, nysdps.gov 
and it's one of the more accessible websites and um, it's you just go right into their site you don't have to post yeah. separately you can do it right into the website as a number of people have um, um i'm sorry the motion uh, tom is to uh, hire brandon o'sullivan as full-time police officer is there a second i'll second second um tom do you want a word on this just that this this young this officer was has been working for us part time, and the chief has recommended that he go to full time. Um, and we've had a discussion on it, and I think mm -hmm. we should be approved. Right, and we had a full time. Uh, uh, we had a part time place officer. Open up. Well, we had a, a part time officer has gone full time in another department. Right. So, so there's is, some this movement. Is, this is an additional full time officer that we said that we would hire in the winter. It's now January. So, okay. any other any questions? Um, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Uh, is the well, officer here? Um, I know some officers. No, no. Some okay. Officers. I was just wanted to say hello. <laughs> They're just keeping their eye on us. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, guys. Um, uh, next up, uh, Chief O'Brien of Sag Harbor Fire Department requests permission to hold their annual carnival fundraiser at Havens Beach from Tuesday, August 1 through Sunday, August 5, with a fireworks display on Friday, August 4. You also request a rain date for the fireworks display on Saturday, August 5. In addition, he requests to place signs on Long Wharf, Mesh Park, Route 114 from July 18th. Uh, to the 1st of August. I'll is make there a motion? motion. Tom, is there a second? Second. Discussion, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the matter is agreed to. Number 15, Kevin O'Brien Jr., Chief of the Fire Department, requests permission to hold their annual department picnic on Sunday, August 20, at Havens Beach from 12 noon to 5 p.m. I'll make the motion. Tom, is there a second? Second. Bob, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Matter is agreed to. Opposed, matter is agreed to. 16, um, I am to adjust the cap of Stephen White's as special counsel. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make the motion. Oh, is there a second? I'll second. I'm just give a quick overview of Stephen's work. So Stephen was brought on board <clears throat> to help us with grants um, as far as the fire department, ambulance corps, and police department. He's already helped us with the repurposing of the $250,000 for the purchase of the boat. He's, he's also helped us, assisted us with obtaining $30,000 for body cameras for the police. And uh, he submitted, I've had him submit letters to Fred Deal, um, Senator Palumbo on our behalf to request additional funding. So he's already paid off what, what we've paid them, which was, I believe, 7,500 was the first cap. So we're raising it slightly so he can continue his work. Yep. No, it's good work. Uh, the, and that it, you make the motion. And is there a second? I did second. You did it. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Uh, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Thank you. Resolution uh, item number 17 to approve the service listing of the Sag Harbor Fire Department Service Award Program. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Um, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the matter is agreed to. Uh, Kathleen Mulcahy, um, Executive Director of Fighting Chance, requests authorization to use Long Wharf transient docks for their annual Voters Against Cancer Fundraiser on August, uh, on Saturday, September 9th, with a rain date of Saturday, uh, Sunday, September 10th. Uh, let me welcome the former mayor. It's good to see you, Mayor. Uh, did you want to talk about it a little bit? I'd uh, like to get it introduced. I'll introduce it. Um, is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, welcome. Um, yeah, just this is a very, very important fundraiser for us. It actually, with a little bit of luck, will be our biggest fundraiser of the year because we have so much excitement about it and it's been so wonderful. And Bob Borey, who's still here, brilliantly suggested we move it to September, which 
has our board. So excited about it because that way folks will be out, they'll be here. Hopefully your vote will be working again. <laughs> that's, 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 always, that's always a tricky, yeah. always a tricky problem. Set, but September has more chance than mid-May. Right. So yeah. we're really excited about it. But I realized sitting here that I forgot a major part of this. I would like to amend this to also include a sign at the end of Longworth. I'll make so a motion with so that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. I would just say that that this would be my third year. My middle, the first year was terrific. Uh, the second year, um, I never left the dock <laughs> because my aging boat had no interest in participating that day. So I'm looking forward to a triumphant return the next year. Uh, thank you for coming over. Um, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the matter is agreed to, thank you. Uh, the 19th for, uh, uh, authorization for Heather Zakowski, office assistant uh, to uh, the Village Hall to attend the following, an introduction to governmental accounting, uh, March 8th and 9th, and accounting principles and procedures, April 19th and 20th. Uh, Heather is a terrific young woman working with us uh, on the first floor of Village Hall, and uh, pleased that she's um, available to take this additional training, and I'll move that. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Tom. Uh, any questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? The matter is agreed to. Number 20, assuming uh, this is uh, um, to have the uh, assumption of the lead agency and determining significance for the proposed sewer extension action to sewer shed K and sewer shed L. Uh, I would like to make that uh, motion, and this is just part of the process in uh, developing these two sewer sheds so that uh, their, their status can be ready for action when the funds come into place. So that the village board is here? Yes. yes. I'll second that. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Um, 21, um, regarding CICRA for the Steinbeck Park water, Waterfront Walkway Project. Um, I'll move this and explain. Um, is there a second? Um, Thank you for meeting the team. Thank you. Um, the, um, recall that we installed the first stage of the walkway uh, last year, and that follows the arc of the beach. The next step will be to uh, have the walkway continue around and over to Windmill Beach. Uh, the ultimate design here is to have the three parks integrated one to the other, and in a manner that will be um, fully ADA compliant. Uh, the first step in this is to get up a rail. Uh, we've uh, been inviting bids uh, for the rail, uh, people ask what the rail might look like. Um, we've got, um, uh, in terms of a beach-like rail, the two banisters that go down the steps onto the beach. Um, we can continue that kind of rail along and under and around, or we can uh, raise our sights and try to do something that's the equivalent of the long wharf uh, railing, which is about three to four times more expensive. So we're in the process of shopping for money and friends and pro bono, but one way or the other, uh, we've made a, a, a high priority of completing the access, not just for uh, 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 ADA people, but for the entire public to be able to move comfortably between Steinbeck, Windmill, without crossing Bay Street. Um, so that is, I, I would move um, that we get the secret process underway for that. Is there a second? I seconded it right. You yeah. did. Right, thank you. Any other discussion? No. Nope. Okay. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The matter is agreed to. Thank you. Um, next up is to initiate secret for the Long Wharf Transient Dock Project. Um, this is the project I mentioned earlier on the left, uh, the west, west side of uh, the Long Wharf, uh, where we uh, 
uh, receive bids on um, Friday. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. A second. Second. Uh, questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. The matter is approved. All, uh, thank you. Um, number 23. Uh, the mayor uh, authorized the mayor to sign the harbor master agreement with the village of North Haven. This is an annual uh, pro forma. We provide uh, harbor master services to our neighbors. Um, and uh, it, uh, if the harbor master wasn't busy enough, this just increases the scope of what he looks after. Um, I will move that. Is there a second? I'll second. Second, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, the matter is agreed to, thank you. Number 24, approving the appointment of Michelle Field as Justice Court Clerk. Um, this is gonna happen in two stages. Uh, we earlier observed that um, Leslie was retiring, going on, and this is to bring in a new clerk. Um, you know, the arrangement here is we, um, host the uh, village court, and uh, we work very closely with Judge Rana, who is the presiding officer. Um, this is uh, her recommendation to us for um, the clerk she would like to appoint. And uh, given her transition from East Hampton, where she's been a long time um, professional, um, uh, senior professional, that we're going to do it in two stages. So there's a motion here which I will make, uh, and, and that's to author, authorize uh, the village to hire Michelle Field temporarily as a part-time justice court clerk at an hourly rate of $30. And that's just through the month of January for transition. And then thereafter to uh, step into a full-time assignment as the clerk of the court and we'll put her in a regular line. And this is just to bridge these uh, these weeks. So I'm happy to make the motion. I don't know, Kate, do I need to make them separately or together? Um, we can make it together. Okay. So, um, and there is a resume of uh, uh, Michelle Field that's I think been put I'll in second. Your, I'll second uh, the motion. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Any questions or comments? No. no. Okay. I would hear uh, all those in favor indicate for aye. saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The matter is agreed to. Uh, uh, next up, the improvement and payment of bills. Um, let us take warrant number 32, 33, 34. Um, in sequence, and 35. And 35 mm -hmm. uh, on the back page. Um, a, a motion to approve. So I'll moved. I'll second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 We come now to the second public comment period uh, on any subject. Anybody care to be heard on any matter? Okay, thank you. Um, I would hear a motion to adjourn. I'll move it. I'll second. With a new world's ground record uh, for a meeting.